Welcome everybody, I'm Barry Mountford. In this video, I'm gonna show you the behind the scenes to these images. I'm gonna go through the lighting setup, what gear I use, what materials I use, camera settings, and the post processing. Lots of lovely little nuggets of information to share coming right up. So before we get started, if you are new to the channel and you like the photography behind the scenes and reviews, why not consider subscribing to the channel? So let's get into how I created these images. Now I will try and keep this short. A lot of the other videos in the past have been quite lengthy. So I'll try and keep this one short, but packed full of lovely little bits of information for you. So a little background to this image. Since the turn of the year, I've had this little bit of an obsession with clouds. I've been photographing, drawing them, painting them, trying to create them in the studio. And I thought it'd be a good idea to try and actually make some clouds and try and make them look as realistic as possible and include them in one of my images. Now I've used the die cast model, not the most detailed model at all, but that was part of the challenge to try and create something realistic looking with something that obviously was a toy, basically. Now to create the clouds, I've actually used stuffing out of a pillow. I did try cotton wool initially, but cotton wool just didn't seem to to do the trick, but the stuffing out of a pillow works a treat. Now what I've done is pulled them all out clumps and just glue them all together. But the idea was I wanted to light the clouds from inside to create a little bit of depth in the cloud. So I've actually glued lots of lumps around a plastic Tupperware container so I can slide a flash inside and light it from the inside. I could put a gel on the flash if I wanted to and create some different colors inside the cloud. Now to make the clouds look a little bit more dramatic too, I've actually sprayed them with some black spray paint to create like dark patches and light patches on the cloud and it's worked really well. I have had a lot of trial and error trying to create these clouds and to try and make them look realistic and I failed loads in the past trying to create these. Some of them just looked horrendous, but I've kind of, this is as close as I could get to making them look as realistic in a photograph as possible. So let's talk about the lighting. Now, if you don't have the same lights as me, you can use this setup and use whatever lights you have to recreate this scene. So don't worry that I'm using these lights. I use the Pixpro lights, I've used them for a long time now. Love their gear, but you can actually just use whatever lights you have available to you. So we'll run through the lighting setup now. We'll start with the background light. Now, I've actually laid down on the floor lots of tin foil to recreate like, almost like an ocean scene. So I get like a lot of reflection in the uh, the tin foil and that worked a treat. But what I wanted to do was create like a moonlit backlit scene. So I've set up the uh, the Pixar Pro Pika 200 in a long focus reflector at the back and I had that fitted with a grid, but I also had it fitted with a blue gel to give it a kind of a moonlit look to the scene. And what that was doing was actually back lighting the clouds but it was also giving us a nice reflection in the tin foil which was laid on the floor kind of faking the the water look below the, the scene and also try and give a bit of depth from the aircraft which was sitting up here down to the floor um i did want to create a big huge vista um scene but having a small studio just wasn't possible that whole perspective from the lens i would have had to have a huge area just to create the, the exact scene I wanted. So this was the best I could get uh, in shooting this small scene. So to light the clouds, I've got one of the Pixar Pro 580 Mark II sitting inside, and I've also have the Hybrid 360 sitting in the other clouds. I've got two clouds either side, and they're both being lit from the inside. Now I can control those lights, obviously from the camera, and I can adjust, adjust them just enough, just so there's just enough light coming through. Now when I did start photographing this, there was just, even at the lower settings, there was just a lot of power coming out of those lights, because I wanted a kind of a shallow depth of field, like a little bit of blur in the background, a little bit of bokeh, because when I was shooting with a, a, like a greater depth of field, it would kind of just tell it was foil on the floor. So I really wanted to kind of soften it up. So I was shooting at about F5, I believe, around about F5, F6, to give it on 100 mil macro, no it wasn't, it was on a 35 mil. I was shooting, I mean, 35 mil for these shots. The 35 mil um, Sigma Art Lens 1.4, but I was shooting at around about F5 to give a nice little depth of field in the image. Um, and that worked really well. But to get that kind of power level Right, I've actually had to fit two ND filters to the camera. Could have used high speed sync, but I kind of like sometimes I like that. There's a little bit of a color cast that you get with the uh, the filters that use the ND filters. I'm specifically using uh, the BN, BNW ND filters. I'll put links in the description below to all the gear that was used if you want to check those out. I think it's a three stop and a 
five, so I think, I do believe. Um, I've got that fitted there, and that gives me just the perfect output coming through those clouds. Now, to light the actual plane itself, I'm using the City 600 fitted with just a standard reflector, but I also have it fitted with a nice tight grid. I think I had it fit with a 60 degree grid because I didn't want the light spilling all over the clouds because that was just like making obviously the white stuff and out of the pillow really bright and we didn't want that i wanted to control every aspect of the image i wanted to control the output of the light from the clouds from the background on the ocean but also on the plane itself so i fitted that with a nice tight spot grid it gives a nice tight ball of light just on the aircraft and i've positioned it behind so as to kind of fake the effect of the moonlight coming from behind on the aircraft and it worked out really well now one of the the test shot i've done which was this image here you can see it looks really good i'm really happy with the way this turned out i love the way the clouds look in this image um, and you can kind of just see a little bit of reflection on the water what i did do also in the camera is i set me kelvin to around about 4700 to create like a blue mood again all over the image to kind of fake that moonlit look so, so what i want to also do in some of these scenes is i want to try and create almost a little town or city below just to try and give a little bit more depth in the image to try and pull the plane away to give it as if it was like high in the clouds and running through the clouds i want to try and create a little bit of a city type feel so i added some fairy lights to the scene switched those on um, and i do believe i upped me aperture a little bit more i'll have to double check on that i can't remember exactly what i might have been a 3.5 initially and then I went to F5 to try and reduce the bogey on the fairy lights because it initially was just too much. They were too big, it didn't kind of look realistic, but I think I've set it around with F5 to reduce the bogey on the background and give kind of a look to a little town on the side of the ocean, which I think works really well and does give it a lot more depth to the image. I was very happy with the way that turned out. To suspend the model from the, uh, the ground in the middle, I didn't want to kind of put it on a stand I thought it would be too much Photoshop time after the, the fact. I want to try and just reduce that as much as possible. So what I've done was there was a little cardboard frame and I've just strung some thread going across the cardboard frame and just laid the planes on top of that and that worked a treat. And I was able to just obviously touch those up in Photoshop after which at the end of the video I will show you exactly how I've done that. I also laid some more of the pillow stuffing around the edge of the cardboard as well. Again, just to try and give that little bit more depth to the image that there was kind of clouds in front and a little bit higher and a little bit lower. Now the final element I added to the scene was smoke and as you all know I love to add smoke in my images but I want to try and create a little bit more of a mist as it was flying through the clouds, kind of the vape off the clouds, maybe it was raining, just to create an overall bit more of an atmosphere. And I knew having the uh, the Pika 200 and the long focus reflect at the back with the blue gel would backlight that smoke and create a little bit more blue tone to the overall scene and it worked out the treat. I was super happy with all those elements, the way they came together to produce those images. I was very happy with the way they turned out. It was a lot of, a lot of effort. It was actually quite a good challenge for me, lighting and using this small space because once I'm set up in this small space, you can hardly move in these type of situations. So it was a good challenge and I was really happy with the way it turned out. So that was the whole process to capture that image in camera. Um, now I take it into Photoshop and do all the little bits of touching up that I need to do to create the final image. Let's take a look at that now. So there we go, that's the image with all of the layers switched on. So we'll switch those layers off and we'll start from the very first image, which was straight out of camera. So this is that image there. So what we need to do is take out all of the thread that you see in the image and the wheels because obviously it's flying so the wheels wouldn't have been down they would have been up so as you can see if i switch it on i think so effective that was we'll remove them simply by using the clone tool and the healing brush tool so that was pretty straightforward so the next step was to add a little bit of prop blur to the props to get that sense of motion in the image and then the step after that was to add a little bit of circle as if the, the props were actually spinning around in that direction kind of again just to give that sense of motion within the image so the next step what i've done at this point you can actually see the long focus reflector in the background and now i wanted to use that in the scene obviously it's backlighting all of the clouds it's obviously backlighting the plane too and obviously giving the reflection on the water but i also wanted to use that as kind of to resemble a moon so all i needed to do now was add a little bit of texture to that to create an effect of a moon in the background so that worked out really well the next process was to add a little bit of dodge and burn to the highlights on the clouds and on the aircraft itself too, just to give it a little bit more punch to the shot. Now what I've done next was up here, you can see where it's kind of, the cloud is a little bit high for my liking, so I kind of copied that cloud, duplicated it, dragged it down slightly and overlaid it again over that part of the, 
image to create a little bit more of a darker cloud on that side because it was a bit too bright for my liking. The next step was to add a hue and saturation layer and remove some of the blue from the dark sky where it was literally just falling into darkness and I didn't want that blue hue on there so I removed some from there. Next what I've done was added another texture, I've named it rain. I added a little bit of dust texture, a little overlay, overlaid that on the image, add a little bit of motion blur to kind of resemble a little bit of rain falling down from the clouds. Again, just add a little bit more atmosphere to the image. So after that, I wanted to add again, just to try and create a little bit of movement in the image, a little bit of vapor trail coming off the tips of the wings of which flying through the rain, through the clouds. So the next step was to add an exposure layer. I just wanted to increase the exposure on that layer slightly because I am going to add a vignette a couple of layers down the line, so that's what we've done then, we'll just increase the exposure, just on selective parts of the image, you can see I've added a mask to that layer, and just brushed out where I want it, and brushed in where I do want it. So the next step was to kind of soften up the clouds above the plane, I thought they were a little bit too much in focus, so what I've done was duplicated the whole layer, made a complete stamp of it, created a, a Gaussian blur on that layer, and then just added the blur to the top of the image, and the following step was to add a vignette to the image, that's why I ex up the exposure in the previous layer, because I knew I was going to be adding a vignette to this image. So the last step in the process was to make a complete stamp of all the layers before, and then take that layer into Topaz Labs, where I added a lot of detail to the image and a bit more contrast to the image, which gave us the final result. Well, that certainly was a lot to go through. I hope you stuck around till the end, folks. There was a lot of information to share there and to get through. It was quite a challenge to kind of fake this scene and try and create a realistic looking image using these small little die cast models, which really, when you look up close and personal, they're not really, they don't really look that good, to be fair. So I was quite happy with the way they turned out. Um, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And if you have liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed and flick the notification bell so you can see when more videos like this are posted because I will be posting more down the line. And with that being said, folks, I will see you in the next one. See you then.